In my right hand, I've got an iron used by none other than Rory McIlroy. And in my left, I've got an iron used by Brooks Kepka. Today, I'm gonna to compare these two stunning irons and see why these two unbelievable PGA professionals use these two irons. Let's get right into the video. Then what is going on guys and girls welcome back to the golf magic channel i'm alex the video and equipment editor here at golf magic and today you're joining me for another episode of brand battle now today i've got none other than the tailor-made p7 mbs the blades of the new p7 series used by rory mcelroy and i've also got the srixon zx7 arguably one of the best feeling irons ever released and they are used by brooks kepka Today, I'm gonna to compare these two irons, just see how they feel in looks, the actual results I get here at the Swing Suite at Chrome Hurst Golf Club, and see how different these two players' irons are. Obviously, this is a blade, this is more of a tall cavity iron, so there is a little bit of a difference already to begin with, but we're just gonna see how different these are and why the two PGA Tour professionals, Brooks Kepka and Rory McIlroy use them, and see just what's their thoughts behind it. First up, let's just talk about looks of these irons. They are both players irons, but as I said, the P7MB has MB in its name, and that's because it is a sheer muscle back iron. There is no forgiveness here, but it is arguably one of the best looking clubs I've laid my eyes on. You can tell that it is made for a tour professional. If you guys are watching this video thinking, I'm off nine or 10, could I play this? No. Do not play this iron. It's absolutely impossible to hit. But comparing it to the Strixon ZX7, you can instantly tell that the Strixon ZX7 has a tall cavity back. The sole is notably slightly wider and you can see on the back of the club, there is some notable forgiveness. In terms of the Strixon ZX7 iron, I know there is some notable forgiveness, but it still is not a forgiving iron. They've got that in the Strixon ZX5. Still though, they are two very, very good looking clubs. But if I had to obviously choose between the two, the piece of an MB is obviously a better looking iron but that comes with a lack of forgiveness. And that's what I'm gonna get onto right now. How are these clubs gonna to feel to begin with before I just look at any data? I know, you guys know, but let's just see how big of a difference it actually is gonna be. Gross. Ah, oh, that's so nice. Oh God, I love this club. Physically, cannot hit a club better than this. Right, so I've had a hit of the Strixon ZX7 and the TaylorMade P7 MB irons, and it's very clear to note the massive difference between them. Although we've got Brooks Kepke using one and Roy McIlroy using the other, the P7MB is the least forgiving iron I've ever hit. I'll say that right now with ease. I used to have Callaway Apex MBs in my bag about six months ago, and although they were muscle back irons, I thought they were actually significantly easier to hit than the P7MBs. It really does echo Roy McIlroy's ball striking. It is. Guys, it's not easy to hit that club in the middle, and if you hit it, a millimeter outside the middle of the club face, you will know about it. It really does show how Probably Roy McIlroy is the best ball striker in the world. They do go a decent way. I'll get onto the data in another part of this video, but they are just so difficult to hit that for anyone who's not a PGA Tour player, it's not fun because I was hitting the middle of the club face about 40% of the time. And when you do hit the middle of the club face, it feels great. But when you don't, you're, you're left with a sour taste in your mouth. So instant recommendation, do not get this iron. I've said it already, but do not get this iron, guys. Get something else. What iron you guys should get though, Srixon ZX7. As I said, I knew that there was a reason why Brooks Kepka put these in the bag. I reviewed these about three months ago and said they were one of the best irons I've ever hit. A bit of a break, hadn't hit these, and I've gone back to it and it's just exactly the same. They are such nice clubs to hit. The feel that you get off the face is nothing that I've ever felt before uh, in terms of irons. I've tested a lot of irons. I mean, a lot of irons, and these are unstoppable. The look down at the dress as well inspires with confidence and for me this is a club that I'd recommend for someone from scratch and probably about 12 because although they feel great obviously being a tall cavity iron there's not that much forgiveness and if you do hit it off the toe or off the heel you do know about it but it still does go a fair distance so that's why I kind of rank it similar to the P770s, except they're not as forgiving. Now let's get into the data part of this video. I'll load both these clubs up on TrackMan and see how they perform. Oh, 
Um, honestly, I think I'm better than Roy McIlroy. Oh my God. Right, so, these irons are a lot of fun to hit. They are a lot of fun to hit, but the data, pretty different. And you guys probably aren't gonna be surprised by that. Let's start with the P7MBs, the clubs that are the hardest clubs I've ever hit. Being 35 degrees of loft, you would expect them to be a little bit shorter than at the restrictions at X7. And that's exactly what happened. Put the data up to the screen for you now. As you can see, they're not going short at all for a 7-iron. 175 yards for a 7-iron, absolutely fine. That's kind of what I play as my stock-ish yardage. Probably about 182, actually. And I use different clubs, so it's not too surprising. But the main thing that I want to talk about here, because those, those numbers you see, you think those are great. But I'm putting up numbers of what I would hit if I hit a good shot with my 7-iron. The actual dispersion in terms of yardage was the, probably the biggest I've ever seen. It went from 120 yards to probably about 188 yards. And that's because the difference in hitting it wherever you are gonna be hitting it on the club face is absolutely huge. Even more than the Ping i2 that I tested a few weeks ago. That's because you've got no forgiveness. Hitting it out of the toe is completely different than hitting it out of the sweet spot. The sweet spot is 20p big. It's very, very small and you guys just shouldn't really expect anything different from a muscle back. The Strixon ZX7, however, is putting up pretty unbelievable numbers. I'll put them up on the screen for you now. And as you can see, I'm getting about 190 to 192 yards with this seven iron. Am I surprised? Not even slightly. This club is unstoppable for me. And as I said before, it makes sense that Brooks Kepp has put it in his bag. The feel difference between this and the piece of an MB, honestly, hitting both out of the center, the Strixon still feels better. It has that support, it has that cushion, and it still goes absolutely miles. This club is one to watch for 2021 and the future, and it really just shows how good of a brand Strixon is. Although it doesn't have the same looks as an MB, nothing will, no players I am will. They've, some brands have come close. The P7MCs, let's say the P770s, they're still stunning irons. These don't look as nice as those, but they do perform, I shouldn't say better, but they perform very, very close to it. These clubs are unbelievable and they do cost a pretty penny, coming in at around 900 pounds that you can find online. Pretty decent prices for two clubs that are unbelievable. The Strix and obviously more for us amateur golfers who are probably off scratch or single figures but it's pretty decent prices. It's clear that there are, is a big difference between these clubs and it's hard to give a winner, obviously, if you guys are amateur golfers, which I'm sure most of the people who are watching this video do not play on the PGA Tour. The Strix and ZX7 is an absolute clear winner, but let's now put it on a signature hole here at the Swing Suite and see how close either club can get. Do I think I can get a hole in one? I think the Strix and ZX7, you know what, I'd be disappointed if the Strix and ZX7 didn't get a hole in one. Let's see how I get on. Hello there. Okay. Strixon's got some competition. Come on. Come on. Oh, that's good. That's very good. Whew. So, that was a lot of fun, but that was absolutely impossible. I don't know why I picked Devil's Island. Like, it's named pretty appropriately because that hole was not enjoyable. But the tailor-made piece of an MB won just by a few inches. Both were pretty decent shots. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Did play the piece of an MB a little bit, but it's hard not to. So, no surprise there. 
Overall, this is quite an interesting video because I understand it's not a direct comparison. The P7MB is a muscle back by name. The Strix ZX7 does have a tall cavity, so it's obviously going to be a little bit more forgiving. But it's interesting to just to look at these kind of irons and see the differences and why PGA Tour professionals like Roy McIlroy and Brooks Kepka are gaming them. It's pretty clear to see why, and it's pretty clear to see what's in their head in terms of their choices. Rory is the best ball striker on the planet. Brooks, unbelievable player, but probably needs a little bit more forgiveness and some softer feel for those irons. So it makes a lot of sense. In terms of deeming a winner, I'm gonna pick the ZX7 just because for amateur golfers watching this video, if you're thinking for a comparison or which one, this one is more forgiving and this is one of the best fitting irons I've ever played. So, Strixon, well done. If you guys have enjoyed this video today, make sure to leave a like down below and let me know what you think of these two irons. They're very interesting in that the piece of an MB is just impossible to hit. So let me know if you have tried it and what you think about it. It certainly is a difficult club and I want to compare it against some other MBs very, very soon. So keep your eyes peeled for that. If you guys are new around here, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below to keep up to date with all our videos such as this one, coming reviews, challenges, instructional pieces, and a lot more to help you guys with your game. I'll see you guys at the next video.